in the last class we studied at the end the short step path following algorithm. We would just like to recollect it once more that you have an initialization step where your parameter theta which creates the neighborhood n to theta along with the sigma the centering parameter is given and you start with a point which is already in the neighborhood. Then you keep on doing these steps we have shown that we can actually show that tau k plus 1 the duality measure is related to tau k in this fashion and once we have chosen delta to be this and omega to be half we can show that we can and here naturally here delta is 0.4 and omega is half then we can easily show that this short step path following algorithm is in polynomial time because of the previous result where we had to choose tau k plus 1 to be related to tau k in this fashion and that is exactly what we had done. Now once uh, you have an idea of this the most important thing is that when you make this algorithmic movement from x k y k s k to x k plus 1 y k plus 1 s k plus 1 where alpha in this case is 1 it is important that you should keep a note that this also has to go to n 2 theta that is should belong to n to theta. So, that so this is something we need to show. And this is where lies the art of optimization algorithms. The fun of algorithms lies in showing that whatever you are doing is actually making sense. So, how do you show whatever you are doing is actually making sense? You do it by showing the basic requirements needed for your algorithm and this is the basic requirement. So, what do we do here? In order to do this we uh, take some we had to prove certain things step by step. So, in order to do it do it we will first come to prove a lemma not prove I would say I will just mention this lemma that if u and v are two vectors in R n with u transpose v greater than equal to 0, then u v e. So, you I am writing capital U capital V e you know this is nothing but the diagonal and this is nothing but the diagonal matrix consisting of the comp components of u and v in the diagonal. The inequality looks very strange, but these sort of inequalities are helpful. Of course, one would say how do I figure out such an inequality? The fact is that you do not st from the air develop this inequality you try to prove that this is in this and while proving that you will see that you would require some estimate like this and then when you then you try to see whether such a thing is true. As before u is the diagonal matrix and v is the diagonal matrix. Now, what we are going to show is the following another lemma. So, lemma A. I am not being very uh, particular about the numbering of lemmas and theorems because it is the idea which is more essential that knowing which theorem 1 or theorem 2. So, what we are trying to now prove is the following that if x, y, and s is in n to theta, then the change that is the grad x grad y grad s that you compute out of the Newton step, the Newton step itself, then you take the diagonal matrices compo 
consisting of the components of grad X cryogonal matrix component consisting of the component of grad S and these are these things. This is less than theta square plus n into 1 minus sigma whole square 2 to the power 3 by 2 Of course, you can ask me how should I prove this, right. So, I want to prove what I have just mentioned. In order to prove this, I take write this matrix D as x half and s minus half. So, you know this x and s both are positive definite. So, there is a matrix whose square is nothing but x. So, that is x of there is a positive definite matrix whose square is x of. So, if I do that then what we do is look at the last thing that you get from the Newton equation. The last expression that from star you have to go back to your earlier notes that when you go back to the last expression of the relaxed Newton system that you are solving is this is minus x s e plus sigma tau e. Now, once you know this, so I will multiply, so this, this equation I can call it as hash. So, multiply hash by x s to the power minus half that is basically x minus half s minus half because s half and x half are both positive definite and hence invertible. If that happens then what you will get is this would imply that taking d as this expression the d inverse delta x plus d of delta s is x s minus half into minus x s e plus sigma tau e. Now, you observe you have two vectors. So, you take u to be d inverse delta x and v to be a vector d inverse delta s. So, what is u transpose v? that is something you have to observe. So, observe the fact u in a product of v. So, this is because d transpose is d here because they are symmetric matrices. So, this is identity. So, this is nothing but delta s delta x delta s and you know that this inner product is already we have proved earlier that this is nothing but 0. When we were studying the general format of the IP algorithm we had proved that this estimate is 0. See, see where this estimate is actually helping you. Now, once you know this you can now write delta s e this can be written as d inverse delta x because these are all diagonal matrices and all are all are invertible all are commute all are commuting. So, d of delta s into e this is the capital U capital V basically. So, of course, from you will immediately know that capital U is d inverse delta x and capital V is d of delta s. So, once you know this you apply what we have just learned because the product is equal to 0. So, this is nothing but less than 2 to the power minus 3 by 2 times u v whole square. So, u is my d inverse delta x plus d of delta s 
O square. So, this is same as writing 2 to the power minus 3 by 2 into now this this thing is nothing but this. So, I can write this as x s minus half into minus x e plus sigma tau e. Once I do this, I can now write again, okay, I will repeat what I have written in the last page, so that you do not lose the link. We have showed that this is less than 2 to the power minus 3 by 2 into norm of x s minus half into x s minus x s e plus sigma tau e whole square. So, this can be now written as 2 to the power minus 3 by 2. I am opening the I imagine the, I am taking that this to be the standard Euclidean norm and I am opening up the Euclidean norm. So, if I open up write the whole thing in the Euclidean norm, this is what I will get finally. So, from here to here this part you figure it out as a homework. Now, once you have done this, this actually means the following, this is less than because it, this mean thing will come out. So, this is less than this is something you can easily prove. Now, as what you have is that x y s is element of n 2 theta. So, when x y s is element of n 2 theta, this will give us the following. how does it give me so. So, if you observe so what will happen x y s element of n 2 theta is implying that not mu sorry tau this is tau sorry. So, once this is there it this simply tells me x s e minus tau e the norm 2 that is the standard Euclidean norm I am not writing because we will not use any other norm is less than equal to theta times tau. So, what is what will happen here is the following I can now write this whole thing as norm x s e minus tau e whole square less than equal to theta square tau square. So, this means summation x i s i minus tau whole square so which which would imply since these are all non negative quantities which would imply that for each i x i s i minus tau is less than equal to theta tau which means x i s i is less than theta tau plus tau less than tau minus theta tau. So, x i s i is bigger than equal to 1 minus theta tau for all i between 1 to n. So, this would imply at the mean of x i s i with i running from 1 to n is bigger than equal to 1 minus theta tau and this is exactly what we intended to prove for this part. So, now once I know this fact, so I my expression will become very simple. So, once I know this fact, so 
what does it mean? It means that norm delta x delta s e is less than equal to I can put 2 to the power minus 3 by 2 here into 1 minus theta tau and then we have to really compute out this part x s e minus sigma tau e whole square. This is what we essentially have to compute. So, also observe the fact that if I take the inner product of minus tau e, then sorry I am making a mistake, then what you will get is e into x s e minus tau into e e. Okay. What will this give me? This will simply give me x transpose s minus tau e transpose e which is n. So, this is nothing but x transpose s minus tau n and this is nothing but 0 because x transpose s by n is equal to tau the duality measure. So, which means that now if I compute this one let us we can use this fact inside it. So, this is equal to x s e I, I am making a little mistake I am confusing sigma was used for a different purpose sigma x x s e one minus sigma tau e 1 minus sigma tau e. So, we have just arrange the thing slightly. So, we have added a tau e and subtracted a tau e and then we once I have this I can now write this as the standard way you compute norms my square of norms. transpose tau of e transpose x s e minus tau e plus 1 minus sigma whole square mu square e transpose e. Now, this part is 0 because of this fact. Now, you have this part which by n 2 theta because x x y s is in n 2 theta this is nothing but less than theta square tau square plus I have 1 minus sigma whole square tau square e transpose e e transpose e is nothing but n. So, this is nothing but theta square tau square plus 1 minus sigma square tau square n. Now, once this is done we are almost through because once this is done it will show that I can put this whole thing there take the tau square common cut it off with the tau. So, and that ends our result.
tau square is taken out. So, I will just have a tau. So, I will have theta square plus 1 minus sigma square n times tau with 2 to the power 3 by 2 into 1 minus theta. So, this is the first estimate that is required to prove our go to our goal. Our second estimate which will say the following fact that let me now for, for the current setup. So, here what I am trying to do is instead of doing the whole thing for n to theta, I can actually take x y s in n to theta, I can actually show it for a much general case, but I will just do it for our own story here. So, if so this is my again I have a lemma, so it is possibly lemma c. So, if x y s is in n to theta and you are running the short step algorithm, you will have the following thing x we do not call it alpha, we will call it x k plus 1 I would guess. So, I am just calling it alpha, but alpha is 1, Maybe you will you will you are getting confused. So, now basically we will have since we have we always write instead of x k plus 1 just to shorten our efforts, we always write plus the Newton step original iteration plus alpha times the Newton step. Now, what we are going to do our alpha here is 1. So, with alpha equal to 1 we will have minus tau alpha e tau alpha is of course, you, you, you understand what product of inner product of these two by n. This is actually less than equal to when alpha is equal to 1 is again less than times eta. So, you see the Newton step and the one which is when alpha is 1 the one which is the higher higher one. Uh, so, this is having the same relationship here what is happening here it is with this is the same. So, here I am taking an estimate of the product of the Newton step and this s x and s component, I am having the same sort of estimate when alpha is equal to 1. What we can once we know this estimate, we are not going to give a proof of this. Now, if we what we have to now do is that we have to choose so, our theta is chosen to be in the algorithm, our theta is chosen to be 0.4, theta is chosen to be 0.4, sigma is chosen to be 1 minus, we will just come, sigma is chosen to be 1 minus 0.4 by root n, which is fixed. Once I choose this, I can show then it would imply that theta square plus n 1 minus sigma whole square 2 to the power 3 by 2 into 1 minus theta. So, these are the quantities which are not known here. If you put on these quantities, then this is less than sigma times theta. Once this is shown then we can show that we 
whenever x y s is element to n to theta, then the short step path following algorithm S p f would give us that x alpha y alpha s alpha is also an element of n to theta with alpha is equal to 1. Of course, you can prove it with any other alpha also, but then these estimates will change a little. So, this is how you uh, continue to do it. So, how will you do this uh, fact? Let us just try to do the proof. So, let me look into the fact this fact. Now, with alpha equal to 1, I have x alpha s alpha minus tau alpha x alpha s alpha e minus tau alpha e, e is a vector of 1 1 1 I want to remind you is less than equal to if you look good to go by this estimate this estimate this whole estimate is less than sigma theta. So, it is less than equal to sigma theta into tau. So, if you look at the if you look at the relation between tau k plus 1 and tau k in the short step path following algorithm, we know that tau k plus 1 is equal to sigma into tau k that was our. So, here sigma into tau k is would give me tau alpha because we are just k plus 1 here is the alpha is playing that role. So, that is what you get. So, what you have proved? You have proved that x alpha y alpha s alpha satisfies one express satisfies one part of the requirement to be in n to theta. Now, other part is to see that the next part show that this one. So, this is what you have to show. Now, how do I show that? Now, I leave it to you to verify that A of x alpha is equal to B, alpha is equal to 1 and A transpose y alpha plus s is equal to c, verify as homework. What we have to now check is the positivity of is to be checked. Now, what you will get? What you will get is the following. So, when you start with x naught and s naught, they are strictly bigger than 0. So, the mu is strictly bigger than 0 and so you start on. So, mu alpha mu is strictly bigger than 0. So, what you get here is sorry not mu tau is strictly because you start with a point. So, when you start, you start with x 0, y 0, s 0, this is in f naught. So, x naught f naught is x naught f naught pair, x naught s naught pair is already a vector with positive components. So, now we will use this fact that we have just proved few pages back is that x alpha s alpha for every component of that vector that this product is bigger than 1 minus theta into tau of alpha. But what is tau alpha? Tau alpha is nothing but in this case 
sigma times tau sigma times tau. Now, theta is positive in our case theta is 0.4 and sigma is positive and tau is positive. So, this is strictly bigger than 0. So, none of them can be here 0 because all of them are greater than equal to 0 if he, any one of them is 0 if either of the, if one of them is 0 then the product is 0. So, it cannot be so. So, which means x alpha s alpha is strictly bigger than 0 and this would finally, imply that x alpha y alpha and s alpha is element of n 2 theta for alpha is equal to 1. So, with this we finish our understanding of the short step path following model, but the problem with the short step path following model is not really implementable model, it is a toy model allowing you to understand how to do the analysis after that. But another model which is slightly better than this which can be which later on leads to a more practical algorithm is a predictor corrector method. So, in the predictor corrector method of course, there are two steps the predictor step and the corrector step. So, in the predictor step, so here my sigma values the centering parameter values will change. Sigma k at every predictor step is 0, this is done the idea of this step is to reduce tau and then this is a corrector step. where I take sigma k equal to 1, the idea is to improve the centrality because there is a centering parameter, but take it force the thing to a more towards the central path. Now, this is something we will discuss tomorrow, because uh, here what we do is that we use two values of theta also one is for the predictor step and another is for the corrector step right. The, the fact is that we start with when we start we initialize we start with a point in one neighborhood and then when we improve our values we go to another neighborhood right. So, there is a st starting neighborhood and there is a there is a predictor rather there is a predictor neighborhood and there is a corrector neighborhood. The fact is that even if your predict when it means the sense that you start from one neighborhood go to another neighborhood start from other neighborhood go to another neighborhood and so on that is that is the way it goes basically if you look at the excess space. So, here is my central path. So, here I will have two neighborhoods slightly bigger neighborhood which is n 2 0 0.5 theta is 0 0.5 and slightly a smaller neighborhood that is this is n 2 0 0.25 slightly more small. So, you start from something here, start from a smaller neighborhood come to a bigger neighborhood, then again go back to the smaller neighborhood, again come back to the bigger neighborhood, again go back to the smaller neighborhood and so and so. So, you are able to take steps which are slightly bigger than the uh, short step path following algorithm. So, instead of writing this uh, thing in detail this is just a very basic explanation that we have given. So, tomorrow we will describe the predictor corrector algorithm and with that and, and also the long step path following algorithm and with this we will end the fact that uh, we will end our uh, story of the path following interior point methods. Once we have done that from the class onwards next the class 
after the next one that is day after tomorrow class we will talk about semi definite programming we will take 2 3 classes to talk about the a very exciting and important area of convex optimization called semi definite programming and then we will give some miscellaneous dev recent developments of convex optimization in the last 2 or 2 classes so we i think with this we would have some 6 classes left and with the tomorrow's class there will be one class gone so we have five classes three semi definite programming and two uh, certain miscellaneous stories about convex optimization and that would end the course so thank you very much